Meave squinted, the better to see the scene. Several dozen dwarves had gathered on the cliff overlooking the chasm. All were turned towards a ramp, at the peak of which stood a barrel. What is that gathering about? asked the queen. Have we a feast day? Nay, answered Gabor grimly. It is an execution. A hairy head peeked out of the barrel. The long, pointy nose and ears left no doubt that it belonged to a gnome. The first Meave had ever seen in her life. Help! Save me! The gnome yelled. They aim to kill me! Cast me in the chasm! Shut your maw! barked the dwarf standing next to him, who then shoved the gnome inside the barrel and covered it with a lid. Your crimes! The sheer weight of them, hey! No lighter punishment is fitting! The other gathered dwarves nodded approvingly. Two gripped the barrel, lay it on its side, then lifted it to cast in the chasm, paying the thumping from inside it no heed. Meave leapt from her horse and, ignoring Gabor's objections, scrambled up the ramp. Oi! You're not allowed! Hey, damn it! What do you think you're doing? I think it's obvious. Preventing the execution. Ah! Ah! Thanks be to the gods! Whoa, wench! You have no such right! Judgment's been handed down. Sentencing's done. Yes. And a cruel sentence it is. One that prompts me to wonder what the accused did to deserve it. Ha! <laughs> Better to ask what he didn't he do, the varmint. Arrived here with his peddler's wagon full of tricks and gadgets. Went from house to house, praised his rubbish to the high heavens, and what's it he sold us? Bombs that go off in your hand. Beard growth formula that makes your hair catch fire. Music boxes for the kiddies. Once cranked, they never plow in stock. You need it but to loosen the screw in the back and... Shut your maw, ye roaster. Doesn't he matter all that? Cause we'd have forgiven it if he hadn't he broken our sacred rules and hallowed customs. Which ones, if you don't mind me asking? Enter the smithy, cap on his head, held nails between his teeth, and poured fruit syrup in his beer. Raspberry! Pleh. Just the ones, and but a few drops. You got nothing to explain your villainy, scoundrel. Not a thing. And that's not even the worst. He saved his highest crime for the end. He was in a mine. And he whistled. Ooh. Oh, aye, that's bad. Shouldn't have done that. Hi, he did. Whistled through his teeth and hummed in harmony a, a long warble. We all heard it up and down the shaft, and our grand elders were clear. Death's the punishment. Death by barrel roll. You truly will kill him for whistling? This is absurd. Exactly. Perhaps for use. But you're in our lands, where our laws rule, and strangers didn't get a say. Calm yourself. Perhaps there is yet a way. Enough for this jabbering! Lads, stuff him in a barrel and give it a good kick down the hill. Well, at least I tried. Do what you must, Master Dwarf. Ah! Finally! With bloody pleasure! No! No! The dwarves would have their way. The barrel rolled over the cliff, the unfortunate gnome inside. As the Lyrians marched from the site of the peculiar execution, they bore in their hearts a strong resolve to do nothing to offend their hosts. <sighs> Dare say it was the Bonniest flight I've ever seen. A perfect parabola. Your land, your laws, I shall not argue with them. But perhaps there is another way. Can a bail be posted? Hmm. Well, the law does allow for something of the sort. But I don't see how that job is worth it. Oh, I. He is. He is. Willing I am to take him at his word. 
Does that suffice? Aye. But just so we're clear. No returns, no refunds. Now get the hell out of that barrel, you wee shite. My lady, I haven't a way to thank you. That we've yet to discuss. Perhaps first we should learn each other's names? Um, aye, yes, uh, of course, oh, what a prat of me. Uh, Barnabas, uh, Barnabas Beckenbauer. Uh, to friends, Bibi. Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia. A co queen? Cows in the corn kill me on it. Uh, your Majesty, obeisance due. None necessary. Protocols for use at court, not beyond it. An inventor you deem yourself. Am I right? Most assuredly. Though, truth be told, the dwarves saw no ingenuity in my craft. <laughs> Seems I'm ahead of my time. Fiery bursts in the palm of your hand. They shall be in fashion one day to your mind. Oh, nay! Nay, just a bit of misfortune, that's all that was. You, you see, I mistook mercury fulminate for saltpeter. The vials stood beside each other, see, and... The details I need not know. But one matter I am curious about. Could you construct a bomb that would explode when desired? For instance, beneath my foe's feet as they stepped over it? Well, of course I can! It's as simple. Why then? You wish to show your gratitude? You must join my ranks. Assist me to defeat Nilfgaard. D defeat Nilfgaard? <sighs> Your ambition, that is. But I'd have been a barrel of broken bones at the bottom of a ravine, if not for you. I'll do what you ask to pay off my debt. And thus, for the first time in Lyrian annals, a gnome enlisted with the army. And though Barnabas Beckenbauer was diminutive of body, this new recruit would prove his worth on more than one occasion. You change your mind, last. let me know, eh? Got the barrel ready and waiting. The Hierarch, intractable man, banned one of my inventions, condemned it as unholy, vile, etc., etc. Decided he would burn both of us at the stake. As you can imagine, we had a difference of opinion in that regard. <laughs> Perhaps I shall regret this, but do tell. What was the thing you created, exactly? <laughs> I knew you'd be interested. You've a curious mind, dear Queen. We're two peas of a feather. Quite the clever contraption it was. Made for a widow, wealthy, but aching with longing. In her husband's absence, tormented by unfulfilled needs. Stop right there. I knew I'd regret asking. And see, it had this special crank that when rotated... Barnabas, no, enough. As you command, Your Majesty. But if you ever get the urge to see it, I have the prototype still tucked away in my trunk. Noted. But by the gods, please, let's change the subject. I needn't listen to this. Guards! Twenty lashes! Ha! Hear that, good folk? Now do you see? This here's the freedom our Queen so graciously delivers! Silence, you fool! Before Meave could leave the market square, Barnabas politely interjected. <clears throat> uh, frankly speaking, there's a bit of truth to what the man says. I'm perfectly aware of that. But what do you want? I don't mean to toot my own horn, but perhaps I might be of some help? Do tell how. I'm all ears. Everything your folk make here, the dwarves of Mahakam make twice as fast and twice as well. You must find a so-called niche, an innovation. And it just so happens, innovations are your speciality. At the risk of being immodest, exactly. Besides, it might serve the cause of peace to show the folk here, non-humans, are not all bad, that they can help, not just steal human jobs and piss in their milk. I'll consider it Barnabas. I shall think and let you know. The time came to leave Broadhead, 
So Meave summoned her advisors, eager to hear their counsel. They put forth ideas, many of merit, but the Queen would decide the city's future. After careful deliberation, the Queen approved Barnabas's proposal. He would manage the city's ailing industry and seek to restore it to health. Barnabas, just please, do your best not to blow it all up. Don't you worry, Your Grace. The only boom in this town's future is that of the economic sort. <laughs> <coughs> You need my help with anything? <coughs> anything at all, I've ideas aplenty. We've come a long way, Barnabas. You've plans for the future? Hmm... We may have won the war, but I've oodles still on my plate. So many riddles unanswered, so many inventions unrevealed. Perhaps you could join my court, continue your work there. We get along splendidly, Your Grace, I know, but that's simply not the life for me. In situ, one sees nothing new, as they say. Besides, I have some unsavory memories from my time at the court of King Nidamir. Hmm, come to think of it, I do wonder if they ever managed to put out that fire. I understand, Barnabas. Yet if ever you change your mind, you know where to find me. Thank you, Your Majesty for everything.